Hi everyone, uh, this is Jimmy here. Welcome to the introduction to HTML and CSS class. It's good to have you all on board. Um, I'll be sharing my screen right now, you know, so we can get into what's going to be happening today. All right, I hope everyone can see my screen. Uh, so it's just going to be HTML and CSS. Um, from our interactions today, I realized that, you know, a couple of people have not started engaging with the contents. Um, my initial expectation, my initial hope was that we would have gone far enough with the contents that this live session would be like a recap, you know, and we'll just go into some coding, but I'll do my best to cover a bit of ground. And before I get into the live coding session, and then we would have to um, go back to the course contents, you know, the contents that were posted, the resources that were shared, I believe are quite um, informative, instructive, they're quite rich in content and would help would really, really help, you know, with your knowledge. You would learn a whole lot. So please do interact with those resources. So we'll get into it. Um, HTML, we'll start off with HTML. Uh, HTML is a markup language that helps you add um, structure to your web content. It's pretty much the frame, it's the bone that every other thing else joins to. It's um, what you see, everything you see on your page. You open a web page, you see images, you see text, all of that is added on by the HTML. Now we have um, varying HTML tags. Um, let me just open. Visual Studio Code here. Okay, so I have an HTML document here that I created earlier in the day. I have um, a folder here. Let me just do that again. I'm creating an HTML file, index.html. This is what we're going to be working with. Um, every HTML document you write should start with this. Sorry. Doc type. All right, this is what should always begin your HTML code every time. It helps um, it helps your browser to recognize what it is that you're putting into the page, you know. So it knows that okay, what you're writing is HTML, that's the type of the document, and then it's able to start um, placing all of the contents you have in, in order, in quotes. So that's important. The next thing that you need to do for your HTML, the next um, HTML tag that you need, I mentioned in the last um, live session that we had, for those who missed that, that every content in, in HTML, everything that you see is from an HTML element, which is made up of, of um, HTML tags and the contents that they contain. So the next tag you're going to use is your HTML tag, right? This is what is going to contain everything that you have on your page. Okay, so uh, your HTML tag, it's very, very important. If you don't put it, things can get broken pretty fast. So it's very important and your tag, um, you need to have the opening tag and then the closing tag. The opening tag is pretty much the same thing as the closing tag, except that the closing tag has a forward slash. That's what indicates that you're closing that element. And um, HTML uh, tags are pretty much case insensitive. So you could use H um, capital letters, you could use small letters, but for conformity, best practice, it's important 
that you use small letters all through, you know, for conformity across board. It's just like a standard, an unofficial standard. You use small letters. And then the next tag that we need is your head tag. All right, this head tag contains um, information that will not be displayed in the web page, but that is really important for your web page to work correctly. The first one is a meta tag. Um, we have a lot of meta tags, but the one that we're going to be using right now um, is this one. And the content is this UTF-8. Okay, this, this is like a standard across um across the html world so to say as you engage more with the content the resources that are shared you see more about this and some other meta tags too and as we continue in the course of the training would you know treat meta tags you know at some point and go deeper into what we can use them for and then i have title right title of a document um, I could just call this, let me see, introduction to HTML and CSS, okay? So this title will show up at the top of my page, right? To tell me, okay, this is the title of the page and it gives um, visitors a glimpse of what to expect, what a page is about. All right. Um, okay, there's one other tag that I'll put here before we continue. It's to link your CSS. So what the one um the best way to link your HTML to the styling that you write for your page is what we call external styling. It's possible to have your styles in this same document, but it's not um, standard practice. Your page gets really, really messy, really fast. So it's always advised that you put your CSS into a different page and then you link into it in your um, HTML. So let's create a CSS page, uh, style.css, right? Your CSS page should always end with .css. That's the extension that you need for that. And then I would link that file in here. The tag that does that is link. That's simply what the tag what the tag is. Inside this tag, I would have an attribute called rel. That's just um really short for relationship. It's trying to ask that you know this what you're linking here, what's the relationship to this page? So I have that as style sheets and then href, that's the reference. Where is the page located? What's the name of the page that you're bringing in? That sort of thing. Uh, so attributes, um, okay, let me just say this before I go on. Tags in HTML can have attributes. Attributes give properties to your um, tags. You know, it gives more information. It adds more property. It makes it more robust, right? So you add attributes using the name of the attributes, your equal to sign, and then you have your, uh, what's that called now? Quotes, double quotes, usually double quotes. Some people, use single quotes but best practice right for your um for your attributes is to use double quotes it's standard practice it's best practice let me just put it that way single quotes will work but for uniformity just use your double quotes okay so because these two files are in the same folder here i will just come here and impute the name of that file spell.css you have to run that and then i close the link now the link um tag is one of the few tags in html that does not require a closing tag a conventional um closing tag you know like we have and that's because it really does not have content of its own you know it works 
strictly with attributes because it doesn't have content there's no need to close it so that works fine okay so that's all we're going to have in the head for this guy and then we have the body the body tag is going to contain the part of the web page that will be displayed on your browser all right so let me just if i had add um an h1 tag here um tags that begin with h and you know have a number like this are called like header tags okay and they range from h1 all the way to h6 h1 is usually like the biggest of them all and then h6 is the smallest and it's um it's in it varies in degree of should i say importance you know so if you have if you have um an element on your page that needs to be that that needs to display um information that is loud you want your users to see it first and h1 tag works really well but if you want a header but it's not the it's not the most prominent um text on the page but it's still a header maybe a header for a smaller section you can go with like a an h5 or h6 you know so that's how that works if i type this in here um welcome to our live coding session okay if i save this Let's do this. And that's the page that we just created. It's as simple as that, you know, that's that's a web page. It's as simple as that. Okay, so um semantics. Now you, you we we have varying um we have other you know tags that we can use. An example is if i will just do like a list of tags that we have i can't list all of them of course there are way too many and then i'll get into semantic html you know and how you can uh, make your html page a bit semantic so that anybody who views it um if they view your code now not the web page itself they have a bit of understanding of what's happening even without de um, delving in too deep now this tag here the div tag is like a division okay if i can call it that it's um you use it to group tags that are that have similar um they share something similar so maybe you have a page that you're implementing and then you have a group of text you have a paragraph you have a header but they are in the same section they are grouped together you can use a div tag to put them together as a way to separate them from other contents that you have on the page okay uh there's another one called span now span does something similar to what the div does but the only thing is, one of the differences is that divs are what we call block elements. Okay, let me do this. And spans are block, um, inline, inline elements. So I'll show us what that means in a second. So let's go back to that page that we can see here. Let me do this. Okay, if I put another, let's say H6 here. Out. And I say that. Okay. So we can see what we have here, right? This is the div. This is the other span that we created, and then the H6 within that span. Okay, maybe H6 is not the best to use 
in that scenario. Let me use another P tag. I'm changing it because um, H6 header tags themselves are also block elements. But I'll explain what that means in a second. I have two P tags. Okay, this doesn't look good. Let me arrange this so that we are nested, All right? Okay, that's better. Okay. Now, um, block elements usually are block-like in nature in the sense that they fill out practically any width that you know they they get into. They take up space, right? You put a block element anywhere and it pushes all other elements below it because it takes up a whole width, like it takes up the entire width of the container that you put it into. Inline elements um, would, they, they would rather just take up the exact space that they need. And if you have multiple of them together, instead of um, forming vertically, you would see them arrange themselves horizontally. Actually, the structure of this is wrong. Um, you should not put you should not put block elements. P is also a block element. You should not put block elements into um, inline elements. It's wrong structure. So that's why that is messing up. But block elements take up the width of whatever container you put them into and inline elements take up only the exact amount of space that they need you know um the property in css that controls that is called display so you have a let me just type that here you have a property in css in css that is called display and usually for block elements for a div um, for example, what you have is display block, right? For inline elements, you'd have it as inline. Now, if, for example, you feel that there is a, a reason or a need to make an inline element into a block element, probably because you want it to occupy more space than its exact space, you can always add um, display block as a style to that element. So you select it and add a style to it. But that's by the way. Now in um, HTML, talking about semantic HTML, imagine that I have a page like this, right? And then it's simply made up of multiple divs. And then I say, I want to add an attribute to this called class. And I say, oh, this, I want this to be the header. And then I want this to be the main contents. And then inside this, I put another div and say that, oh, I want this to be a section of text or a section of, you know, the web page. And then I have multiple sections, maybe like five sections. All right, so let's just paste that again. Okay, let's go with three. And then I have this section. And then within the section, I say, oh, I want to have a body of text that consists of a header, um, paragraphs, and maybe some lists. And then I come in here and then I type I know another div, and then I add another class and say article. Right. If you come into this page and you look at it, all you see is divs upon divs upon divs. And you cannot really um, pinpoint and say, OK, this is what is happening here. Right. Because you're just seeing divs. At that point, this um, document is no longer semantic. It's, it's not easily understandable or easily understood. You know, you're, you should be able to look at the code and say, okay, this is the header without having to look for the class, 
oh, within the header, I have some elements or some links that you know tell me to go to this part of the web page and all that oh this is the footer okay this is the main part of the um web page these are sections within that main part all that you should be able to do that by looking at the code directly so instead of just having massive divs you know a large amount of divs going on and on you use what we call semantic html now there are semantic tags you know that you can use to represent different parts of your web page i mentioned the header right i mentioned footer there is a main tag i can come into this main tag and say okay i want to have three sections right and that's one this is two and then this is three and then i say okay within this section i want to have um in this first section i want to have an article all right that article would have a header let me use h3 so it's not so big first article and then i say i want to have um maybe some three paragraphs within that article um within that particular article and i come in here paragraph one right Right, and I have this. Now take a look at this, and then take a look at what we have here. The difference is very clear, you know, way clear. You come in here, you know, okay, there's a header. Um, we can put a logo in that. Okay, no. Maybe an image. A source. Um, the image tag is also a self-closing tag because it really doesn't have content, but it has attributes. One of the attributes is called SRC, short for source. That's like um, where your image is coming from. If you have an external image, you can simply copy the link to that image. Let me see, I have an image link somewhere here. Okay. uh and then you have another attribute that is important to so called alt that's um like alternate text now that attributes this um alt attribute is very important for accessibility for example for um web users who are visually impaired you know, well, while they are going through your page with like screen readers and stuff, the screen reader knows to read out what is in this attribute so that the visually impaired user has an idea of what they are seeing or what image is supposed to display. Okay, so this image is of a Dr. Norman of some sort, right? And then I just add a class to this, okay? So you look at this, you know that this is for the header, oh, this is the main body of this web page. It's divided into different sections. The sections have articles, oh, there's a footer here. And then, you know, whatever you want to be in your footer, that's a lot more understandable. It's a lot more semantic if i may say so now you can also achieve this with divs but the code is not semantic and so this is much better okay this is way much better this is best practice if i would um, use that word so i come here yeah this is the image we added this is first article that's the header paragraph one paragraph two paragraph three 
and we have that. Okay, so um, moving on. CSS. Now, CSS is used to add styling, okay, to your um, website. You add styles using CSS. Um, I mentioned also in the last video that CSS is all about rules. You know, every code in CSS is a rule. You add rules to add style. And all rules in CSS, they are cascading. Cascading means um, if you have like, okay, imagine that you have something like a staircase, right? Um, a flight of stairs, maybe 10 steps. And then you start from the top and you pour water from the top. The water flows from up downwards you know like a waterfall the water flows from up downwards that's how your css um styling works it cuts it cascades down whatever you have at the top is what it tries to implement first then it keeps on going and keeps on going and keeps on going so if um if you have two different two conflicting styles right if you have two conflicting styles for the same elements on your page because it cascades css would your browser would pick the most recent style and ignore whatever you might have set at the top so for example um these paragraphs here right let's speak okay let me add classes class one here class two and here class three i can come into the css file i created here and then say e right select p now this in css is called this is a set of rules for p tag this here this is what your um, CSS style or CSS rule should look like, individual rules. Okay, I can have multiple of this. I can have each <clears throat> one. I can say section, I can say, I can pick, you know, select anything. Now what you have in front here is what you call selector, okay? Is what you call selector. That means um, I want you to go into the, you're telling the browser, I want you to go into the HTML page and select anything that is a section or that is H1 or that is a P tag. Go into the page and select. Now, immediately after your selector, you have your coily brace. And within your coily brace is where you have your set of rules. In there, you have your CSS property that you want to um, style. So for example, I can say for this P tag, I want to add, um, I want to style the font size, okay? And I want it to be, let's say 100 pixel. Pixel is a unit of length in CSS. Like you would have um, centimeters, inches, foot, yard, all of those, this this is what you have in CSS. It's one of many, you know, it's not the only one, but it's, it's the most common one. And it's the one that we will start with. As we progress, we'll, you know, get into other um, units as we go along. So if I say that I want to style all P tags on the page, I want to add a font size of this. If I save this and go back, you can see that the font has changed, right? It has all changed, it has gotten bigger because I was able to select that. Now, when we talk about cascading, if I come back somewhere here and then I, I type again, maybe I forgot all oh, that I've added a style up there. And then I do this and then I say 10 pixels. 
for example. You go back and you see that the last style has affected everything. So it's very important when you're writing your styles to ensure that you don't have conflicting styles, okay? Otherwise, you won't have what you expect to have. So be very careful when writing styles. Be very careful so that you don't have, um, you don't cancel out something that you've already done previously just before, just because you forgot, okay? Um, now, if you look at this here, you have something in blue that says selector specificity, zero, zero, one. Let me explain what that is. Now, before I explain what that is, in CSS, you have um, selector types, how you can select an element in, in from your HTML page. You have, you can, um, you have ID selectors, you have class selectors, and then you have type selectors. Now, ID is an attribute that you can have on your element, same as you have class. So you could come in here, and then instead of having class, you could use ID. But the thing with IDs is, IDs are unique, okay? So if I have ID one on this page, I cannot use this same ID for any other element on this page. It needs to be unique to whatever element I add it to. Unlike styles, styles can be more, um, styles are more, um, classes rather, sorry, classes are more fluid and are more accommodating, if I, if I may use that word, in the sense that I can have one style, and have it across multiple elements. So I can have a class here. Uh, let's say text, for example. I can have this same class, this exact same class across multiple elements. I can add it here. And it works. They don't, they don't um affect each other. I can also have more than one class for a particular element. Like I have here, I have two classes here, okay? I have two classes added to this P tag here and they work, it works like that. So um, because IDs are more unique, it's best practice to use them as sparingly as possible, right? It's best practice to use IDs as sparingly as possible. You use more of classes, okay? Use classes. You cannot have too many classes on your HTML page. Use them as much as you need to, all right? So back here, I spoke about ID selectors, class selectors, type selectors. Now, if I'm going to select the ID that I have here for this um, element here, I would use hash the name of the id okay so hash and the name of the id that's how you um do an id selection if i'm going to use for a class it's going to be a period or a dot uh with the name of the class i want to select if i'm going to do a type a type simply means your tag it depends on the type of the tag you want to select so if I want to select a P tag or an image tag, it happens here. Now, specificity for selector specificity. You um, selector specificity looks like this for okay for a selector tag. Selector specificity looks like this one. For a select for a class, it looks like this. And for a type selector, it looks like this. So this selector specificity that I have here, you're not you are never going to need to type it anywhere. But it determines how 
um, your selectors work, how the styles that you add to your selectors work. So if, for example, let's come here, um, this P tag here that I have this, if I give it a class, test, okay, and I save it, it has an ID one, it has a class of test, and it is a P tag. Um, back to this styling. If I come here and I say, um, color purple. Color gray. I forgot to mention your each each rule that you have um, is a combination of your CSS property, a colon, the value that you want to um that you want to give to that rule, and then a semicolon. It's very important that we end with semicolons in CSS. And then I come here and then I say color pink. Okay, I have to comment this out. What I'm doing now, I'm commenting out a piece of code. It's it's still on this page, but it's not going to work, right? Everything within this forward slash star, star, and another forward slash is commented out in CSS. Okay, it means that um, this is commented out. It's not going to do anything on this page. And you can use comments to add um, instructions, to divide up your code to say, okay, this code here belongs to social section of this web page. You can use your comments to leave notes like that.
Okay, hi, Shay, can you hear me? Hello, Shay. Okay. Uh, I got lost at some points. I just want to know at what point I got cut off so I know where to pick up from. Okay, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen now. Um, just give me a minute. Okay, so, um, okay, specificity seems to be where I was cut off. So I was talking about how IDs are first in terms of specificity, they come first, and then next is classes, they are like second, and finally you have types, your tags, different types of tags that you have, those always come last. So if you're selecting, if you're referring to the same particular element or tag, and then you're using an ID, a class, and a type selector, the ID would always overrule any other um, style that you set. Especially if the style, if the if the properties are conflicting, that's important. So if I come here and I set, if I come to this place and I set a font here. Because I'm not sent um, a font size, rather, if I set a font size here, because I'm not setting a font size here or here, it's going to pick what is here because it's not conflicting, okay? But the moment I add a font size to this ID selector, that font size will override anything else. So um, briefly, 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 I want to see how far we can get with trying to do this page. It's just like a whole lot of text uh, and one image. So I'm going to be getting into the code. Hopefully we can do this in like five minutes or so. If not, I'll just do a little bit and add some styling so we can see. Okay, so first of here, we have this big header, right? I can, I can use an H1 for that. Let's come back into this and clear out everything that we have in here. Just in the body. Okay, so does this have a header, so to say? I guess so. This is not particularly actually, no, it doesn't. This is just text. It's not a header with the navigation links and all that. So I could just come in here and start with the section. Within that section, I have this header and this um, P tag, paragraph rather. So I have H1, Dr. Norman Bor. Okay, and then the P. Tag. The man who saved the billion lives. Okay, and then I can just choose to continue on with the image. Now I can use the image tag here, but if you scroll down, you can see that this has something like a caption, right? So the image tag may not be the best thing to use. There's something called the figure tag, okay? And the figure tag allows, um, has a tag you can use inside of it called fig caption. So fig caption works with the figure tag pretty much. Um, what's this? 
Okay, so I don't have to type this long thing. Let me just do a copy. Because we're pressed for time. So I can just type this into the caption. Um, this is the link to lots. And then I add my image into this figure tag. Source this. Don't forget your alt attributes, very important. I could just say to normal and then close that. And then let's see what we have at the moment. Yeah. Our styling is affecting that. So let's come here and clear out everything that we have in here and save and then go again. So we have this, okay? All right, so what's next? Now, I um, when I write, when I code um, an HTML page, I always like to start with the structure of the page before I start styling, usually. So I, I know, okay, this is all of the content. I put that into appropriate tags, and then I start styling from the top. Okay, I can use maybe an H3 for this. Let's see what that looks like. Save that. And come up. Okay, so this is this. And this is this. Now, if you notice, this looks smaller than what we have here. So we could just um, choose to, let's give this a class and say heading, and we could just pick that class here and give it maybe a font size of 30 pixels, and let's see how that goes. Now, if I was working with, um, yeah, that's bigger, but it's not quite there yet. Now the font, the, the type of font that is being used by type of font, I mean, um, if you're typing up a document and then you say you're using area or you're using Times New Roman, that's, that's what I mean by type of font is different okay we are, we are not using the exact same font that he's using so that's why there's much disparity in what it looks like but that's fine uh, let's try 50 pixels so i was saying that if i was using okay yeah this is a lot better if i was using um a design Usually, I could look into the design and say, okay, this is the exact font that was used here. This is the exact um, font size. And then I could just impute that. But since I'm not using a design, I'm just picking up the values from the top of my head as I go, right? Uh, I can come here and say, Small heading, perhaps. I mean, you can use anything, um, but try to use something that makes sense to the page you're working on. So, font size, let me set like a 30 pixels. This is probably too big. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that's big. Uh, from the look of things, we won't be finishing this page, but I hope that this gives us an idea of what's happening. Okay, that, that's smaller. Now, if I was going to continue styling, you can see that this is centered. Everything on this page is in the center. So I would work to center everything. Um, I'll look for CSS properties that deal with centering. Now, usually there's no one way you know, to achieve a certain style. It depends on the developer who is working. Okay, I could probably I could use um text 
a CSS property called text and then add a value center. I could also probably use merging and then use a value of auto. What it does is it picks the, what merging auto would do rather, is it looks at the elements that you're adding margin auto to, looks at the exact size of the elements, right? And then picks whatever overflow there is and splits it into, into equal halves and places those um, the remaining space on the left and on the right of the element. If I come here and say, margin auto, let me just show that. Uh, hold on. I think this is the last styling I'm going to add before we move on. Oh, I need to give it a width. I think I say. Of 100 pixels, for example. The width is too small. Let's say 500. All right. So you see what I mean? It places it exactly in the center and then shares the remaining space on both sides of that element. So that's one way to center, right? So whatever you want to achieve, you can always try to figure out, okay, how can I go about this so that I achieve this exact same thing? Okay, so on that note, um, let's take any questions. I'll probably try to finish up this page and then share the code um, on the Slack channel so that we have an idea of, you know, what happens to get this look going from this to looking like this okay i'll share that so we can have a look at that and then the assignments um would be open after this class shay please are you collating the questions please um the assignments will be open after this class if you have any questions please please reach out um I would offer as much help as I can without giving you answers, you know, in quotes, but please reach out. Let me know what issues you might be having. So, Shay? Uh, can you use both semantics and non-semantics in one HTML file? Why would you, there, there's no reason for you to use non-semantic HTML. If you're doing semantic HTML, just stick with it and go on. It's best practice, really. So um, as much as possible, we try to stick with, or we should try to stick with best practices while um, writing our code. So if non-semantic is not best practice, you should avoid it as much as possible, really. How does the tag close automatically do? I'm guessing that's for self-closing tags. So I mentioned that elements are HTML elements are your opening tag, the contents in between, and then the um, closing tag. So for self-closing tags, they don't have a, they don't have contents. So there's really nothing to close. You know, you just have the tag, and then you have all the attributes that you need that you put within that first opening tag. Because there's no contents, there's nothing to close. So that's how that works. Uh, must your style.css and your current work be on the same folder? If you're working with purely HTML and CSS, it makes sense for them to be in the same folder, right? Um, if you're writing one simple page or one single page and then you have your HTML and you have your CSS, you would not want to put it in a different folder. It's, it's just unnecessary hustle, okay? So one single folder works. Uh, how did you go from VS Code to the ports? What extension do I have to add to automatically launch this site? Okay, by ports, I th I think you mean this here. Um, so that works with an extension in your VS Code. Come here, you have this is where you have your extensions. It's um, an extension called Live Server. Okay, it helps you to launch um, a development environment for your HTML and CSS. So you don't have to refresh the page. Once you type anything and you save, it automatically updates the page. So that's what Live Server does. 
Um, is there a list of extensions that are needed for VS Code? I don't have a list, really. But you should probably, you'd probably want to use, um, okay, I think Kevin or someone on the Slack channel had pasted a list of extensions and how you go about choosing extensions. Because you cannot, you, you should not choose extensions um, without checking them, checking that um, the extensions are maintained and they don't, they won't add um, bugs. They won't get buggy when you add them to your VS code. So uh, I'll probably look for that chat and then share again so we can take a look at that. What browser are you using? I'm using a browser called Brave. The name of my browser is Brave. It's um, it's similar to Chrome. So if you have Chrome, it's fine. You don't need to use my browser. But I just, yeah, it works. It works. Um, Chrome is open source software, okay? So some people take Chrome and then work on it and have different versions. So Brave is one of those versions in quotes. Uh, is there any reason why you didn't align the sentence of setting the video? No, there is no reason. I just wanted to show what magic was going to be. 